Okay, uh, so you've been fighting these cases for a really long time and uh, there's been a lot of conversation about the Disturbed Areas Act and AFS, PSA and PSA. Uh, what I'd like to start with is uh, the PSA under which uh, people are uh, can be summarily arrested. Um, tell us a little bit about the kind of people who they've been arresting under the PSA. What is the proportion of people who are absolutely innocent and that there's no need for them to have been arrested at all? Give us a sense of that. Yes. Whenever they arrest any person, they keep them in interrogation centers for quite long. Then when they hand over the custody to the local police, the local police started to showing their date of arrest the day they were handed by the security forces to them. So next day they were produced before the court. When they were produced before the court, they tried to show to disclose before the honorable court, honorable magistrate that they were arrested before four months. So honorable court never entertained their request. They only say that you have been arrested yesterday. Your arm and ammunition has been recovered yesterday. So your start, your period will be started from today. How many PSA cases have you? I think seven to eight thousand cases. I got caution from the honorable high court. So whenever we plead these cases before the honorable high court, the honorable high court cautions these detention orders. The detention order is served to the jail authorities. They never release. It, it has been seen for the first time in the history of the world that in jail there is another jail called counterintelligence jail. Whenever they got any order from this well, releasing of any person, these counterintelligence people arrest them from Jammu as well as from Srinagar. They keep them in the interrogation centers. Then it is at their will and whim whether they can re-detain somebody or they can release somebody. Oh. This law has been misused by the authorities from, I think from, I am dealing this case from 90, from 90 this law has, this public safety act has been misused by all these political parties, mainstream political parties of their own, for their own purposes this law has been made for the benefit of these political parties. And they, how does an MLA decide that someone should be released? Do they ask them to participate in democracy or how does it? Yes, be? yes, because they got an undertaking. Because what this this counter intelligence uh, wing has been well, kept for that. Yes, if somebody has been arrested, we will take an undertaking from him. Don't do it in future. That if you do in future, we will again even we will eliminate you. That they have eliminated. And does the undertaking ensure that they will not do this in future? Does it also ensure that they will cast their votes or or? Anything? Yes. They also take an undertaking from them that during an election you will also support mainstream or you will work as a source for us or you will work as a source for agencies, as a source for mainstream political parties because they take an undertaking from their parents. And how, um, you know, you were telling us earlier that uh, there are a whole number of uh, people arrested who are not released or not given bail despite court orders. How common is that? Is that would it, is, it, is, it, is, uh, it is common in Kashmir. Because we got uh, thousands and thousands of this uh, bailed out so by the. So do they just do they let them go and rearrest them, or do they not re release them at all? They rearrest them. They rearrest. The, them. See, authorities suppose we have a superintendent jail, a party is a respondent. In my in in hundreds of the cases, in thousands of the cases, jail authorities is a party. When court direct them to release them, they comply the court order. But they got them, they, uh, uh, they call a counter intelligence people that I have received a court order kindly, what, what will be... Uh, Even if the PSA is quashed, they Yes, yes, our general secretary, our general secretary Mr. J.N. Shaheen, a detail, a clear cut order has been posted by the Honorable Justice Adar that released him forthwith from custody. Then our three senior members went to Rajuri along with that order. General our worthy president, Mr. Mia Kuyu, he is also in jail. And the public safety act. The bar association yes, president. Yes, bar association president. Government has revoked his detention order. What is the purport of revocation? We have two revocations, uh, two set of revocation orders in the public safety act. And uh, how long have both the general secretary and the president been uh, under arrest? I think from last uh, uh, three and a half months. Three and a half months. Four months. Four months <laughs> almost. Okay. Uh, is there any other way in which lawyers, human rights lawyers, have been facing? persecutions from the state in, uh, in the uh, and f five six lawyers were killed between 2004 and 2006 yes they were killed from 1996 onwards within just two, uh, two years of time because Jalil Indravi was only a human rights lawyer he too was pleading the case of the people 
he was killed. Has that led to any sort of fear psychosis amongst lawyers? I mean, your colleagues, have they become more reticent in fighting yes, cases? Yes, in uh, after 96, there was a tremendous apprehension. There was tremendous apprehension. Senior lawyers, you know, senior lawyers said, have almost, that, that is a surrender. They didn't then plead the case of the people. Because when they killed innocent six people, they were apprehensive they can kill we people also. Yeah. See, un under the current unrest, the, the last four months, um, has the PSA been used extensively or are the boys being detained without filing any charges? What What, are, what is the no, situation see, like? PSA, they cannot stop. I, as a lawyer, filed 60, 70 petitions during this unrest. The last four months? Last month, I filed more to than 70. To get the PSA quashed of children, of uh, Yeah, kids? I got uh, one case uh, that Ikram, he was only 14 years of age. So he was released. Among the all these, you know, 70, 80 people, I have filed the petitions. How many boys have been arrested in the last four months? How many people have been arrested in the last four months for stone pelting? Thousands. 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 In substantive offences, I think in Public Safety Act, more than uh, 200. More than 200. Under PSC. Under PSC. In substantive of, uh, uh, in substantive offences, they are uh, they are uh, daily arresting, arresting, uh, arresting hundreds of people. Okay. Under substantive offences. Okay, and uh, you said you recently paid a visit to uh, the jails, all the jails of JNK. Um, did you meet the, some of these people who have been arrested in the last four months? Yeah, I met one person. Uh, he is seventy-five years of age. I was wondering when I told him why you are in jail. He told me he was in Kutwa. That is, you know. Uh, I think uh, 400 kilometers away from his home. When I met him, uh, he told me that I have been charged that you are throwing stones. When I am a retired professor, so this allegation is a vague allegation, and I have been arrested for a vague allegation. And on, he is under PA, booked under PSA. PSA, or? and he is presently lodged in Kutwa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, uh, the other, the other boys that have been, one hears that they've been arrested on, for not for PSA but other offences, smaller offences. Uh, how does it operate? Do the, does the police, how does the police uh, detain them? Uh, is there demand for money? How, how does it operate? See, well, I think people have a lot of venom against police, a lot of anger against local police. I won't say that this paramilitary forces and I say about local police. Because they made the arrests. It is an information from all quarters, whosoever came to us. They told us that police is demanding money. They say pay us money, other, otherwise face Public Safety Act. If you will not pay us money, you will not be released. You will be booked under different FIRs. There are hundreds of FIRs open, you know. In Kashmir, there, there are open FIRs. So whenever they like to arrest anybody, they can book them in that FIR. What has happened in 90, maybe Mullah, they will arrest a person in 90 FIR. And how many people, would you have any idea that you said thousands of people have been arrested in the last four months? How many of them would be minors? What percentage? The minors are not much in the jail. There are only few minors. There are 17, 18, up to 20 years. There are more than 50, 60 boys I have seen. The, the, the age group is more 20, 21, 22, like that is the age group. But there are few minors in the jail. Uh, I'm pleading their cases. And are they being kept separately in juvenile detention centers? No, no, there is no juvenile, juvenile homes in Kashmir. They have been detained with, with the hardcore criminals in Rajuri, in Pooch, hardcore criminals. Those who are involved in Dakati, those who are involved in in, in, in this uh, NDPS Act, Narcotic Act, those who have been involved in murder cases, those boys who are under stone pelters, they have been kept with those hard, hardcore criminals in Rajuri and Push. And away from their homes, from there's a 500, 600 kilometers away, and they have been detained there. So there is no juvenile, juvenile homes in Kashmir. See, if somebody has been involved in stone pelting, they must have taken the undertaking from their parents. But instead of taking that, they were taken to different jails of the state. Tell me something, what are some of the main um, 
main sections or subsections of the Public Safety Act which are being, which make it susceptible to be misused. What are the flaws of drafting? I think your Lord Chief, public safety itself has been misused. All it is sections. I think you see, there is a, there is a famous Supreme Court judgment, A.K. Roy versus State of, uh, State of Bengal, 1982, it is a Supreme Court. A.K. Roy says that whenever they arrest any person and detain him under any preventive laws, he must be kept nearest to his home. You know, when district magistrate passed a detention order, he detained a person 500 kilometers away, 600 kilometers away, 700 kilometers away. So, Six. you know, in court below, when I met Asya Indrabi, because I am also counsel of Asya Indrabi and Sophie Fahmida, you arrest a lady and keep that lady away from, away from his parents and his family of 350 kilometers away and kept and kept the lady in a small barrack where you have no basic amenities available and and detain him under public safety act so if arrest somebody if you arrest a lady under public safety act then you should have detained her you should have detained and lodged her nearest to his home not 300 60 kilometers away when it when i met this asia being a lawyer to asia and this sophie from Fahmida, she told me that i am already suffering from multiple diseases i have a disc problem she has a disc problem she has a ortho problem she is suffering from heart ailment and she has not been taken to the hospital when the basic amenities basic medical facilities are not available so there is every possibility of his she can be collapsed in the jail Tell me some of the other, uh, you know, we spoke about the persecution that lawyers have faced in Kashmir over the last couple of years. Uh, what about, what are the, some, other, some other kind of difficulties that you guys face while uh, fighting these cases? Um, is there any uh, sort of uh, money available to fight these cases? What about witnesses themselves? There is a threat perception. So, are witnesses willing to uh, testify? How does that work? So, from the last, uh, I think, because in all these, you know, cases where the dead news are facing trials in substantive offences, mostly they are the police made situri and they have kept only the police witnesses. So, for a local people, they cannot influence a police person. You know, I think thousands and thousands of people were acquitted. Even I got thousands of the people honorably acquitted from the courts. Because the difficulty is, the defect in the cases is because all these witnesses are the police witnesses. Are you also fighting some of the cases uh, where boys have been injured either by pellets or bullets and are in hospitals? Are you also fighting some of their cases against the police? Or are you only fighting the cases of the boys who have been arrested? Under no, I fight all kinds of cases. Whosoever approaches me, see, I don't have any political you know, affiliation with anybody. No, I was wondering if you've got any such cases of boys who have been injured and their parents want to do the do the parents does the, do the families want to sue the the police is is that a, yes 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 people yes, they yes. want to or yeah, is that yeah because there are families families who are approaching us even if we cannot we can we have a bar association we have a lawyers who are dealing these cases and you are not there now they are coming and suing for compensation even they even they deny to accept the you know the the amount which has been government of india says that we will provide the execution and all this. They deny to accept that. They say no, killers should be booked, killers should be convicted. We don't accept. So, you know. if you had to argue from the other side, you know, do you think that there is even some amount of justification for them to keep the Disturbed Areas Act? What would you recommend that it be completely repealed? If you had to take their point of view also in in into account. Would you say that it should be repealed? Would you sh should would you say that it should be perhaps amended, or would you say that it should be kept as it is, but there should not be misuse? See, Which of the three uh, see, would see, you, see, I will tell you, you one thing. If we see the graph of militancy, when we have this, why we have this Armed Forces Special Powers Act, why we have this Digital Aid Act, why we have this all laws, it is only it was only those laws was only important and necessary. 90 to 2000 
when there were thousands of the militants fighting for freedom of Kashmir. Now, as for the ratio of militancy, the growth has now 50,000 to 500, right? From 50,000 to 500. These now, are the official figures? Official figure. It is their statement. That there it are is, only 500 Yes, 500. Militants. For 500 people, you cannot keep well, 10 lakh forces here. What for? What are some of the common ways in which the disturbed areas see, are? See, I will tell you. Uh, I will tell you. See, give, us, give me a couple of case sir, instances sir, where sir, the D, uh, DSA is uh, disturbed areas act is. Uh, see, I will tell you one. The short, in my area, in my this uh, small area of Dalgate, there were 52 boys active. They were militants. They were, were fighting. In the 90s. They were fighting for against the sovereignty of country. Out of t t uh, 10 were martyred. Rest were arrested. After they were released from jail, they are doing their own business. They never themselves involved themselves with any kind of subversive or militant activities. So why you will kept a banker here? What for? When you have a report that there is no militant in my area, when there is no militant in the city, when there is no militant in the rural areas, so why you will keep this disturbed area act? So why you will keep this armed force special power act? So you remove that. One is for all. When you say then, then, then is a public sympathy. Then there is a, then there is a, a people will come peacefully, demonstrate peacefully. Again, that is in my inner also. We can say because I, I have a freedom of expression. I can say that we want freedom. For that you cannot kill me. You cannot kill me. You cannot fire upon me. It is my fundamental right. So you're saying mostly in these illegal killings and the disappearances, those are the kind of cases that are aided by the AFSPSA and the Disturbed Areas Act? Yes. That is unfortunate. When, see, I never say, see, if, if you are fighting on a battle with the militants, in cross-firing you can kill him. Now, who will fight for him? When he is fighting with the gun, you are fighting with the gun, there is no problem. When you arrest somebody, even if you arrest a militant, if you arrest a Mujahideen, you have to give him a chance to prove his innocence. And then he has to be dealt with the 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 law, then you have to fight with him. Then you have to take him to the court, register a case against him. But when you arrest a militant, and later on you say that he was killed in cross firing, so how it is possible?